Now to our special report on a big new step in this ongoing clash over big tech. Many have been confronting the companies that they say damage all sorts of issues in our society from equality to democracy. Social media under fire. We've already seen big tech use their size and use their scope to rig marketplaces. Elon Musk is a danger to Twitter and to freedom of speech. Mr. Musk hates the SEC and it's uh, childish, it's immature and it's narcissistic. Maybe we should be asking ourselves why one company is trying to monopolize the internet, communication platforms and digital commerce. And maybe we should break them up. Break up big tech. This has been a conversation for a minute now, and policy and politics have not fully adjusted to what has become this massive power of tech companies and those titans who run them. The fact is the largest companies today are not banks or oil companies anymore. They are the top tech companies. And the people who founded them are far richer than any other people in the entire history of capitalism. That's a big deal. That's a big shift. And America has laws that restrict for example, how many TV stations and newspapers one person can own. That's something Rupert Murdoch has run into. But those laws were written before Congress could imagine this kind of massive media power on this new set of Internet tubes and platforms. So that regulatory loophole is a reason that we are witnessing a current debate over whether the publicly traded company, Twitter, can be bought and wholly owned by one person. In this case, the world's richest person, Elon Musk. The news tonight, he is racing to get financing to complete an acquisition to buy Twitter outright. He could mix his fortune with investor support and drop a whopping $43 billion to buy the whole thing. So this is a story of business and a story of speech. That's what powers Twitter, but also of politics. More than any other American, Donald Trump showed the reach and potential damage of Twitter as a platform. He literally used it to summon people to D.C. to stage an insurrection. Remember, he didn't give a national televised address. He's the president at the time, after all. He used Twitter to get to the people that he exactly wanted to get to and use an algorithm that stokes, at the time, exactly the kind of division and hate that he wanted. It was that, more than anything, that got him banned from the platform outright. And now Elon Musk is fanning the idea that Twitter is something different than the simple publisher we know publishers can post or ban anyone. The New York Times doesn't have to run your letter or op-ed or article. That's true under practice, and it's true under law. But here we're seeing something different. Musk talking up the idea that Twitter, especially if he gets a hold of it, will be really a true town square where everyone, which would mean Donald Trump, can say virtually anything. Well, I think it's very important for uh, there to be an inclusive arena for free speech, uh, where all, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Um, Twitter has become kind of the de facto town square. Um, so uh, it, it, it's just really important that people have the, both the, uh, the reality and the perception uh, that they are able to speak freely within the bounds of the law. That sounds like someone trying to get people back on the platform, if he were in charge. Now, Elon Musk is clever at business and strategy. He's made himself one of the more controversial, but also more popular members by the relative scale of his billionaire tech peers. He certainly, in many measures, is more beloved across the spectrum than a Zuckerberg or a Bezos. He's really played politics masterly for his business interests as well. He sold kind of a green image on the left. He gathered government subsidies from both parties. In the Obama era, he was telling Congress all about the national security of space programs and positioning himself as a kind of responsible business steward with an eye on the public interest. Then he cozied up to Republicans for tax breaks, which many of these companies benefit from. And while Trump has made a point of clashing with Elon's tech peers like Bezos, Trump also has already clearly said in public he, he sees Musk as more of a potential ally. I especially want to congratulate someone who truly embodies the American ethos of big thinking and risk taking. He's a little different than a lot of other people. Elon Musk, congratulations. And the feeling may be mutual 
or at least it's perceived that way, and that's part of what's happening this week, whether you've been following this as a business story or a democracy story, because Elon Musk's very real push to get a hold of Twitter while talking about getting people back on Twitter has some very well-known Trump fans salivating over the thought that this business deal could unlock the art of the deal, if you will, and get Trump back online. For once, this isn't about power and money. Musk is doing it to save free speech. It's not an overstatement to say it could be the single most important development for free speech in the modern history of the United States. The five people at this table all are fans of Elon Musk. I don't think yeah, that I overstate all of us are. All I of am. Us. This is a guy who's, who's made a lot of money, he's been very successful, loves this country and the freedoms it affords. He's our Edison. This is our Thomas Edison. This is our Da Vinci of our generation. Okay, okay. First of all, it's always worth a little caution when people start declaring billionaires who are skilled at self-interest and amassing wealth as some kind of once in a millennium in the innovator or creator or artist. We saw Fox's Brian Kilmeade there. He almost sounded like another infamous Trump fan who's known for his own hyperbole, Kanye West. I'm standing up and I'm telling you I am Warhol. I am the number one most impactful artist of our generation. I am Shakespeare in the flesh, Walt Disney. Picasso is dead. Steve Jobs is dead. Walt Disney is dead. Name somebody living that you can name in the same breath as them. I have ideas that can make the human race existence within our hundred years better. Now, who's going to be the Medici family and stand up and let me create more? Fall back, like, at least a little bit. I mean, this is what we're talking about. A world where billionaires declare themselves or their loud, powerful allies declare them at that level. If you want to be that historic, you're going to have to wait for history's judgment, which does take hundreds of years. That's history. Now, having said that, Musk is very talented. And he could improve Twitter as a business for users. That's possible. He also is doing things that matter, that are different than people who just move capital around. He's disrupting space travel. He is really changing the auto industry in some amazing and hopeful ways. Tesla is helping fight climate change while making money. There's no doubt about that. Each Tesla car cuts an estimated 500 pounds of CO2 a year while reducing the need for gas. That's why other rappers have shouted Elon Musk out for helping eliminate gas. As one famously said, can't see straight these shades, Celine Dion, you can't gas me up. Shout out to Elon. And shout out to Tyler. So yes, nothing about the problems with this issue and corporate or individual control of Twitter takes away from Musk's rather impressive record. Reporting on this objectively doesn't require a negative view of him at all or the prospects here, but we put this report together to make something clear because this is a very big deal for democracy. The reporting shows and the objective facts are that Musk is a billionaire entrepreneur. You might say, duh, Ari, I already knew that. But what that means is his skills, his record, his role means self-interest, business, and profit is his motivation, and his skill. And it will continue to be what he is about. Indeed, under law, he has a fiduciary duty to the investors that I told you tonight he's pursuing right now. He must maximize profits for them, even if he takes the company private. That's a fact. But yet he cultivates this image that he's focused on something else, this Da Vinci-level artist talk, this free-thinking advocate for free speech, this principled friend of MAGA, this fascinating iconoclast and celebrity who just happens to have tens of billions of dollars. Well, this isn't accidental. I told you he's brilliant. It's a wider strategic effort to cast him as something other than a, another business person doing a business deal when that's what he is. So he's been very shrewd about positioning himself publicly as this free-thinking, fun-loving, softer, relatable person who can even cameo with the best of them. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be hosting Saturday Night Live. Mr. Musk, 
Yes. How are Hi, you? Pepper. Congratulations on the promotion. Thank you very much. You're thank right. you. Those Merlin engines are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea for an electric jet. You do? Yeah. Then we'll make it work. <laughs> Good luck, Machete. Get the bastard. To anyone I've offended, I just want to say, I reinvented electric cars and I'm sending people to Mars in a rocket ship. <laughs> Did you think I was also going to be a chill, normal dude? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he has done those things. The punchline is that he has no chill. And he's probably chill about very little. And he is very bright and strategic. And that is important here because we are talking about a platform that does impact our democracy in ways that, quite frankly, many in Congress don't even understand. They don't even claim to sometimes if you watch the tech oversight hearings. Political strategist Che Komanduri, who joined us earlier tonight, he says strategy is at play, that Musk deploys Twitter already is not a place to just have philosophical debates, but to, quote, promote his financial interests. Indeed, Musk spiked one cryptocurrency after tweeting that he was holding on to his investments. He's also helped impact Tesla's share price. It went up after a tweet about something he was going to announce at a press conference. He also delayed disclosing his own Twitter holdings to the SEC, which allowed him to buy the stock at an artificially low price, according to critics. And all of that is the times that Musk was just engaging Twitter as a user, not an owner, albeit a very influential one with over 75 million followers. If he becomes an owner of this platform, I want to be clear. Elon Musk could unilaterally do all kinds of things. They could be transparent or not. Nothing in our current laws would force his hand on a lot of the core running of the platform. The financial rules focus on the funding and the creditors, but not the secret sauce, not the algorithm, not whether he decides to just unilaterally restore Trump or Putin or takes other people down or secretly change what Twitter presents in order to play politics, which could also be, again, given his record, something he could do to enrich his companies that could probably be legal most of the time. Going back to Coleman Dury, he says Musk would be on a track to helping Trump and the GOP, which in turn will increase his own bank account. So Musk talks about limited government, but he's also gone further than most in attacking the legitimacy of democracies themselves. Again, you need to know this about someone who's going to have more power than the owner of the New York Times and the Washington Post combined if he gets a hold of Twitter. He's made the thin and really maybe dangerous argument that democracies are essentially just corporations with militaries. The government is simply the biggest corporation with a monopoly on violence. And, with, and where you have no recourse. The government is the biggest corporation. That's an argument. We can debate it. But the things that make people believe in their governments when they do well, when they're patriotic or stand up for civil rights or protect the little guy or find ways to help people who don't have value to a corporation, like children who aren't even allowed to work for them, well, that's different than a corporation. Corporations don't give out money to to kids or school lunches or help people who fall on hard times. That's his view. Some credit for being transparent about it, but it is a long ways from what a lot of people believe democracy can provide. And when Musk says he's a libertarian, well, remember, in Silicon Valley, libertarian is often just code for Republican. He moved Tesla's headquarters out of that whole California blue state area to Texas to get tax cuts. Other companies were actually leaving Texas at the time, because the state had a big government, anti-libertarian, anti-abortion law that put the government inside doctor's offices. A little bit of irony, but only, only hypocritical if you took the original claims seriously. Now, if you listen to Musk, he will tell you that his purchase of Twitter and the changes he will make will improve the platform and help free speech and also along the way be profitable. The reporting shows... And his record reveals that many of his past claims about ideology and principle remain negotiable for the bottom line. And by the way, that doesn't make him a bad businessman, but let's just talk about what he is. Musk did not create the patchwork of laws that let billionaires wield this much power. But he benefits from them. We're in a world right now where billionaires can buy and sell these platforms and wield uncheckable powers over who even gets to use them. One day, it could be bringing back Trump. Another day, it could be banning the Democratic candidate or a Republican one. Or it could be secretly minimizing or muting the speech of one party or the critics 
of, say, one billionaire owner of the platform. No matter what happens with this attempted takeover, I'll tell you one thing that might be a positive step if you want everyone to pay attention to this very confusing, fast-moving, technological, democratic world we live in. This whole clash is dramatically showing everyone this power imbalance, these flaws in the system. This is the kind of challenge that can only be met by equally competing powers, billionaire-on-billionaire billionaire clashes, or by the force of law. And that leaves some pretty big open questions on the table right now tonight. 